This video is dedicated to conservatives slash libertarians who still believe in the principles of a free market society. Now, this video will not attempt to debunk the concept of a free market per se, but will look at its operation in the context of online platforms such as Facebook or Google. It's no secret to anyone that big capital has got very woke, particularly this year. So woke that during Pride Month, several giant corporations have updated their profile picture by combining both Black Lives Matter movement with Pride Month symbolism thereby have ceased to be a neutral platform for all people to enjoy and became an identity-driven tools for the loudest groups in our society, constantly reaffirming and appealing to them in their marketing, whether it is a sexual or a racial minority, if the company is located in the West, those groups' identity will be pushed by those corporations. And to tell you the truth, this has never happened before, at least on such a massive scale. All major top 500 corporations in the United States have changed their profile picture either for Pride Month or for Black Lives Matter, and many would combine both in their support. And no, the goal of this video is not to argue why those corporations chose to do so, because the answer is pretty obvious, and that is of course for profit, but rather it will be an argumentative plea for the conservatives that we need to extend our regulations of online companies such as Facebook and Google. During all this Black Lives Matter hysteria, many fellow YouTubers, particularly of the dissident right, but as well as others, were banned off the platform for no reason. Well, for the reason of not agreeing with it, of course, and being problematic as usual, but if we look at it from the point of view of a free marketeer, then that ban was absolutely legitimate, since those YouTubers have signed their terms of service, a double-sided volunteer agreement in which it is assumed that if YouTube would view one's content, such as of Stephen Molyneux, as no longer being in terms of service, then it would be absolutely fine for them to remove it with no reason. It is their platform after all, and the same can be applied to Tulsi Gabbard's advertisements being suspended at the height of her campaign. It's their platform, they can do whatever they want. So literally no baking cakes for you in literally all small shops you go into if you got the comparison. But in response to that, the free marketeers would say that the consumers after all can define which business is worth their attention and which is not. So if a business is acting actively discriminating against its customers, the consumers would choose another business, and moreover, if you don't like it, you can start your own Google with your rules and regulations. Everything seems fair, right? Wrong. And let me explain why. But before we do that, let's just take a little dive in history. That is the creation of a private property and the recognition of individual rights. And those individual rights particularly ended every single time when they touched another person's private property, a term which can entail anything from trespassing to patenting. And we all agreed as a society that the owner of a private property can do with it whatever they please. Now, when private property of a person is limited to a small business or a shop, we're not dependent on it, because if we don't like that shop we've been to, we can easily find a replacement. In other words, if the local church does not accept you of who you are, you can easily find another church and go there. And perhaps those are the ideal structures of a free market, where you have an abundance of choice and whereby nobody forces you to participate in an economical exchange that you wouldn't like. However, as the company gets bigger, it can affect much more things that are beyond the voluntarily exchange, such as for example running a city or a whole country. But that is another story, because for this video I want to focus your attention on internet giants and the influence they have in shaping politics. Because as we know, if a person is banned from Google, Facebook or Twitter, they are banned from being heard. I did, I googled the word Jew. Uh -huh. And the first website that came on was a website called Jew Watch, which is an anti-Semite uh, website of Holocaust deniers. And for me, I'm, I'm second generation to the Holocaust. For me, it was enraging. For me, it was the moment in which 
democracy should have boundaries. And I guess you, you beg to differ. Well, I also find the site enraging. Uh, an important part of, uh, of our values as the company, though, is that we don't edit the search results. You know, what, the, what our algorithms produce, whether we like them or not, uh, those are the search results. And I think people want to hear the, and want to know that we have unbiased search results, even if we strongly disagree with them. It's a sad thing. It's, I mean, it, part of it is, is the state of the world. The world uh, has a lot of anti-Semitism. And when people use the singular word uh, Jew, like, oh, that person is a Jew, there is an anti-Semitic undercurrent to that but phrasing. You, you have the if power in say, your hand to change it. Don't you feel tempted? Um, no. No, I mean, I don't think I'm going to change whether those people are anti-Semitic or not. You know, it also might be a lousy search result. I'm not completely defending it. Uh, but it's very important to us that they be algorithmically derived and that nobody question the integrity of our search. Now that jewwatch.com has been removed for a very long time, Google continues to alter search results and ban content it sees as being against its fake terms of service. Since 2016, PragerU were in conflict with Facebook and Google that would delete, restrict or demonetize their videos for no reason. In October of 2017, they filed a lawsuit against Google over the violations of the First Amendment rights, asserting that Google was a public forum. The court, as expected, has ruled out that Google was indeed a private company, which basically excuses Google from all ills it does to its users, affirming its legal status as not a public forum, as it positions itself in its appeal to customers, but as a private company that can do whatever it want with itself. Should I say their body, their choice? But tell me this, is a multinational company of such a scale and audience such as Google can really be a private company with no accountability to its users and the government? Well, besides paying taxes in the place where it is registered and occasionally providing customer service. The revenue of Alphabet is greater than GDP of Hungary, yet the Hungarian government is accountable to its citizens and even often has elections. The point is, is that those companies are monopolies, almost as any other government, because they have defeated literally everyone on the market and now became a single actor in the market that can essentially do whatever they want without the risk of its users immigrating to another platform. Form, since most of what users need is already on Google. Why moving to Yandex or some other tech giant? It is fair to say that when a company is too big, it is time that it should be regulated or nationalized in order to function for the public. And if you disagree with it out of your libertarian principles, then please tell me why can a government interfere into private companies to ensure that there is no racial or sexual discrimination, but would never dare to do so when private companies discriminate based on political orientation? Or maybe you would actually be for government not interfering into private companies with regards to reasons that I've mentioned. Or maybe you would also be fine for private companies to pollute the environment or even produce pharmaceuticals that do not withstand any testing for safety. Because at the end of the day, it is government regulating private companies, which is bad according to you. Fuck the government who has a monopoly of violence, am I right? Give people liberty who will create organic hierarchies that are not even accountable for the public as in the case of Google and can use their liberty to worsen the life of others. And what is government after all rather than a reflection of its governing community? Maybe it is time for government to step once again and ensure that other than discrimination based on physical characteristics, there can also be other forms of discrimination that should not be allowed to occur. How can one speak of a free marketplace of 
of ideas, when some ideas are forcefully thrown out of the marketplace, while some ideas are covered with a black cloth on their respected showcase, not even to mention the ideas that are imposed on you by a very impatient seller that gets very upset if you reject their low quality ideas. Um, but then we also talk about um, removing information that is problematic. You know, of course, anything that is medically unsubstantiated, so people saying like, take vitamin C, um, you know, um, take turmeric, like those are all will cure you. Um, those are the examples of things that would be a violation of our policy. Um, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations would be a violation of our policy. And so remove is another really important part of our mm. policy. That is a really important part of 230. So there's a Good Samaritan clause that actually enables us to remove content that is legal under US law. The First Amendment in the United States and liberal democracies in general apply freedom of speech protections, unfortunately, to the relationship between a citizen and the government. It does not, however, take into the consideration the relationship between a citizen and a citizen or a citizen and a private company, which, in my opinion, is the problem. Since big so Social media companies like Google are essentially the only platform where one can express their ideas to the wider public. And when certain ideas are oppressed and censored by those social media companies, it seems like nobody is going to stop it. Because as long as it's not directed to person's sexuality or gender, or something along those lines, companies can get away with it. Ultimately, the government has allowed big corporations like Google to wield enormous power over the population completely free from any state intervention. And the prime victims of that are the anti-state regulationist conservatives themselves, as well as the distant right and other political actors that are extremely hated by the people who run those types of companies. I'm sorry, but as we have enforced other regulations, such as the anti-discrimination laws, labor rights and generally checking companies if they are working up to standards and occasionally not doing something that is illegal, I believe that our economy would not collapse if we add one more little tiny regulation from the government and that is to big tech not censor speech they don't agree with. I think it is time for conservatives to abandon their principles that are hurtful for them and I guess look for a governmental policy that will improve the well-being of the public. And as I'm going to argue, a part of that well-being is being able to freely express your opinion over the internet without being censored. If you like what I had to say, then please subscribe to my channel to view more videos like this one. But if you disagree with my opinion, then please let me know in the comments why I am wrong.